Hi guys, welcome back to Bella's Big Adventures. My name's Sue. Today, Doug, Bella and I are setting off on an enormous adventure. Uh, we're finally getting to go back to the UK after two years of not seeing any friends or family. Right, Doug's just putting some last minute things in the bags and then we've got to get all this in the car and go and get our PCR test before we drive off and put it all in the van. So we'll see you in a bit. So the testing centre's at Sky Park, which is the most recent skyscrapers to have been built in Bratislava. We're going to go back now to the apartment, collect the rest of our stuff and Bella, and then set off to the van and finish filling her up and hit the road. So see you later. We're going to go on our holidays, are we? Going to go and see the two grandmas? Yeah, they're waiting to see you, they are. You've just got to get there first, that's the only problem. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's got a cafe as well. That's the cafe there. Yeah, where you get in. Okay. Where are we? We arrived at the campsite. Are we? Yeah. It's a nice place and there's a beautiful sunset coming on. So, it's been a really, really long day. So we're just gonna cook some dinner and go to bed, I think. <laughs> Whose ever idea it was to have a mad three-day trip across Europe must be insane. 
it's a really big campsite by the looks of things, it goes back quite a long way. Morning guys, we're still at the campsite. I'm just going to do my first ever emptying of the toilet and I'm going to show you around the campsite while I'm at it. Um, it's not very complicated, it's mostly terraces of uh, vans and a couple of toilet blocks. But I'll give you a little look around, it's nice and quiet here, really peaceful. Nobody speaks to you when you've got a toilet thing in your hand. might be the only toilet block, I'm not sure. Apparently there's a defibrillator in here as well. Some washing up. Washing machines and or was it two, maybe it's two washers and two dryers? Wash ones do very good. And this is where you empty your toilet. In case anybody's never seen one before. So it just looks like a toilet, really, doesn't it? With the lids that you tip everything out, give it a good rinse out, and that's your job done. Pull this orange bit out. If I can do it one handed, and unscrew the top, which is where the waste comes out, but that's somewhere safe so it doesn't fall into the toilet. And then when you're tipping it out, you basically press this button to stop any air trapping inside and glugging and things like that. That's it, job done. It wasn't at all scary at all, or messy, or smelly, or anything like that. So I'll just wash my hands, and then I'll go and carry on with the tour of the site. You can see the trees around it. It's quite an open site, but the, it's surrounded by lovely little hills and forest. That's reception just through in there, and I think they just they must do fresh bread and things like that because people are coming out with little bags of things. And this section is the cafe. As I say, it doesn't appear to be open at the moment. It's open to everybody, I think, this when it is open. It's very pleasant. Lots of outside seating. Kiddies playground at the back there as well. Screened off with some hop vines. looks nice. It's really easy to get to from the main road so if you're on the motorway and want to get off for a stop it's nice and quiet. No traffic noise. It did rain quite a lot last night this is why the tables are all soaking wet. It's the only thing that kept me awake. Really peaceful. We just parked down there. Clever little device. So you don't actually have to go over, very simple, but catches the waste and directs it into the drain. So we're putting the waste pipes on. And so we're going to probably be wild camping tonight, so we're going to empty the water and fill it back up again so we've got plenty of fresh water for today. I'm not quite sure how far we're going to get today, we're possibly trying to get to Leuven near or Ghent, maybe in Belgium. Uh, the closer we can get to the Eurotunnel, the better. It's apparently about a nine hour drive from here. Okay, so we've put about three quarters of a tank in, which, you know, it's not ideal to travel with a lot of water, but we're probably not going to be on a site that has any today, so that's that done.
my viewers asked if you, I could record the noise inside the van while we were driving along, so this is for you. Obviously, there's no potholes in this road because we're in Germany and the roads are great. Right, well we've stopped for our brunch now and I'm just going to test out the Tassimo. I'm not quite sure whether it will work actually on the, on the inverter but we'll give it a go and see. Well the answer to that question is yes it does work on the inverter so that's great. Uh, so I can have a nice cappuccino. Now I'll just wait for my chef to cook me some breakfast. <laughs> Bella's just having her 11 dish. Nice chew. And Doug's just cooking some bacon and eggs. Hi, morning guys. Um, we're absolutely shattered. We drove and drove and drove and drove till about midnight last night. And um, we just parked up. I'm not actually even sure I know where I am, to be fair. Um, but anyway, we've got to get on the road fairly quickly because we're going to the Euro Tunnel. And Doug's currently sticking on the French requirement with the stupid looking stickers. Unfortunate. Unfortunately, I bought the magnetic ones and of course the van isn't metal, so we're having to stick them on with command strips and just keep our fingers crossed that they actually stay on. Uh, yes, so we filled in our passenger locator form. Um, the only thing I haven't done yet is ring Eurotunnel <laughs> and tell them my API, because apparently booking through the caravan and motorhoming club means that they don't pass on any information as such. Doug putting the stickers on. There's an air here <laughs> and I will put a uh, what three words um, in the description below so you can find it. It is supposed to be only three and a half ton vehicles and as you can see there's lots of parking space. So yeah so we're going to hit the road and once I get to the tunnel I will video everything I'm allowed to obviously they won't do the passport control things but um, if you've never been in the tunnel then you'll get to see what it's like. Um, okay so we'll speak to you later. Go on with the caravans on it. No, not down there. Please follow the road for one kilometer. The road includes motor oil trains. Your destination is located in an area with restricted access. <laughs> Move to rail trains, eh? Well, there you go. This is the this is the entrance to the Euro Tunnel from the front side, French side. And we're obviously heading to the pet reception, which is on the right. And as you can see in front, hopefully, barriers. Oops, there are some speed bumps, unfortunately. Off to the right here, Doug. And as you can see, it's not a very big queue or anything today. We are quite early though. We've arrived in plenty of time to allow us to do whatever we need to do because we're not sure about all of this. And this is the pet reception in the car park. We better park out of the way of people. Here we go. Is that caravans and motorhomes? There's actual caravan and motorhome parking spots, which is very handy. Perfect. As you can see here, there's a pet exercise area. And here's Bella. How you been doing in the van, Bells? Huh? Are you glad to be out of it? <laughs> so you have to go in through this entrance. I'm not going to be allowed to film inside, I don't think, so I'll just go this way. Oh, 
Okay, that's Bella sorted and the lady very kindly put our API in because we've been trying to ring Euro Tunnel um, to put our API and details in since eight o'clock when they're supposed to be open for 25 minutes and they're still saying they're closed, which they're not, but anyway. Okay, so now we have to drive to the barriers you could see when we entered and show the passports. Uh, fingers crossed, that's all fine because I think the lady's already put in the Covid tests and all that kind of thing, so I don't think they're going to be asking for very much other than the passport. And we don't know whether they're going to check the van or not. We have got food in here obviously because we've been travelling for three days. But if they confiscate it then so be it. Um, you know, it's only food at the end of the day. Right, so back the way you came basically. And then turn right at the roundabout. Is it a roundabout? Yes, roundabout. One chap just came in and he hadn't had his health check done and the gentleman serving him actually organised a vet for him. Now I wouldn't rely on that, you do need your health certificate if you're coming from the UK. Well, or France it seems. Pass pet passport. He hadn't got a pet passport, he'd only got his book from the vet saying that she'd had her jabs which is no use to anybody. Right, so we need to go... The self service one, maybe? Do you think? I don't know. Well, there's a person in the one where the cars are queuing. This one straight on is self service. You can put your own code in. So let's do that one. The one? The silver one there in front of us. The one with the person? Well, there's a person standing there, the lady, yes, but I think you can put your own code in. Um, as you can see, there's a little ticket machine there where that lady's just been. And you can put your reference code in there. If you don't want to do it yourself, you can go to a man station. That's the code. Oh, it's done it. Oh, is it? Oh, it's, rec it's actually recognised the um, registration number because the lady must have put it in. So it just prints out a ticket, I think. Do we want to take the earlier one? Yeah, might as well. Gets us there earlier. So because they're quiet, you can select a, a, a faster time. We were booked in for 11.20, but it's only mm, uh, 9 o'clock or something at the moment. So they're saying we can we can f um, get the 9.50 or something like that. Uh, it's printed you a ticket, the barrier goes up. And we have to drive to the high-rise section, obviously. Sorry about the beeping noise, that is the seat belts and the fridge. Because obviously we've turned the gas off. Um, don't forget you have to turn the gas off when you uh, arrive here. You cannot get on the train with your gas tanks on. And because we stopped the engine, the fridge stops bleeping. These are the tickets you get. It shows that you've got a pet. And it's got a barcode and it shows that we are large, like as in bus or a car with a top box. And two humans and one dog. So now we need to follow the signs for high vehicles, really. Because um, obviously we're three metres high, so you don't want to go under any low barriers. So let's see now. Passenger boarding and embarkment, turn right. Hmm, that looks different, but anyway. Um, so we go right here, right here, Doug. Buses, motorhomes. If you wanted to stop, you can park on the left and go and get some food and things like that. There's some shops, I suppose duty free as well now. So we follow that motor home. So as you can see, there's a blue screen on there. It tells you in French and English the times and when you need to go and pull up. We've taken the, what time did you? 9.50. So we were booked on the 11.20, but because it's quiet, they'll let you get onto the earlier ones for free. There's toilets in the terminal building, entries on the right hand side of the building next to the coach park. So yeah, there is. it's quite nice in there isn't it? There's little cafes and things like that. But anyway, so what does it say on the back of here? Onboard safety instructions. Switch off the engine, apply the handbrake or park, keep the windows half open, no flash photography, no smoking and no walking between cars because obviously it's a moving vehicle. And now it's saying, please proceed. So, U3. Oh, U3. We're U3 on this ticket. 
so Grand Britannia it says over there so we've got to go around here and it's okay this way there's a bit of a speed bump apparently so you've got to go slow and yes it tells you on your ticket also which queue you need to get in we're you three can't go right anyway, it's a big gateway. That must be that sign at the bottom there. What's it saying? Yes, it says Grand Britannia. Oh, what's she saying? Asking us which way we need to go. We're U3 boarding and embarkment, so round that way. Obviously, they've made a chicane, which doesn't help when you're in a big motorhome. But anyway, we've got to go around the reeking to get to where we need to go. It's a roundabout of all sort, sort of. <laughs> Temporary yeah, roundabout for busy people. Roundabout on the, we're still on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. We're still in France, yes, you're still on the right hand side of the road. Right, so 1.85 metres or buses, I presume. The ones that show a bus. And EU and. What does that say? I guess it has cars, this is paramount. Buses on the right is closed anyway, so there's only one open. There's only actually there's only one. Two open. Well, there was two open, there's no one open, yes. So there's only one lane open at the moment. You just have to follow the green arrows and make sure you get in the right section. As you can possibly see through the back, you go through this section first, which is the French police, or passport control, and then when you've gone through this section, they'll possibly check the van to see if you've got the gas off, and then you go through the British passport control, or you used to, I'm assuming it hasn't changed. I'll let you know if it does, I'm not allowed to film this bit, obviously, because it's police control. Right, so... We've just gone through the French passport control and because we live in Slovakia they asked us for a residence card as well as our driving uh, as well as our passport sorry um, I'm not quite sure why possibly because we our passports hadn't been stamped or anything um, Maybe. I don't know Maybe why but they asked for our residence card which we had obviously and it does say that we've been living there for five years or more so they didn't quibble they just looked at it and gave it back so Obviously, they only speak French. <laughs> we didn't quite understand what they were saying, but he did say residence card to us, so we just handed them over and all was well. So now, and that is on your right-hand windscreen, obviously, and then once you go through that, they do a little bomb check by swabbing the vehicle uh, and then test it and then send you to, to the UK passport control, which is here. Uh, there's somebody directing you into which lane. We're behind the trucks and things, obviously. And now... The English are going to check our passports, so, <laughs> or the British, should I say, are going to check our passports. I don't think they'll want to see our residence card, but we can always hand them both over at the same time just to be sure. They usually ask you a few questions, like, why are you here? And it's usually a chit-chatty question to try and establish why you're coming to the UK. Um, so, family and, friends. family and friends is normally the answer. And the uh, fact that we haven't been back for two years. Yes, and we haven't been back for two years to see anybody. So, even though we're super tired now after that three day trip, uh, we still got to, to get through the UK, which probably is going to be the worst part, to be honest, because of the traffic. And we're not used to the traffic anymore. So, yes, so now we've just got to wait to go through here. This bit is actually the most boring part, obviously, uh, just waiting, but it's fairly quiet today, so we've been really lucky, because um, we have been before and you had to queue for ages to get through the two passport controls. So, once we get through here, I'll show you the drive onto the train. Right, so <clears throat> we're through the passport control, the British passport control, and now we've got to follow the signs for Grand Britannia. So boarding and embarkment, as you can see up there, is straight on. Obviously you need to make sure you're in the right height restriction, uh, but you can only go right or straight on. So right is shopping, apparently. Never been down there, we've always just wanted to get on with it. Uh, so around the roundabout. Oh, yes. And we're following the signs for 
caravans and lorries, basically. Large vehicles, it says. And motorbikes, for some reason. Where motorbikes. So we're on the right-hand lane to avoid the height barriers. As you can see on the left there, where the cars go, there's a height restriction. And it's really low. It's below 1.85 metres. So if you've got a top box or anything like that, you have to come down the large section. If you paid for a Flexi Plus ticket, which we do sometimes in the car, we, you can go in there and this is the sort of posh cafe area where you get free food and things like that. But the tickets are so extortionately expensive at the moment compared to an ordinary one that we decided against it. And as you saw, they let us through on an earlier train anyway, so I'm not sure it's worth the extra cost to be honest. Although the macaroons in there are amazing. Right, so we're just going to drive through here. so quiet I think everybody all this scaremongering about traveling nobody's coming anywhere near it but anyway so now we've got a vehicle check I think I don't know if there's anybody in there to turn the camera off right so that was just the gas bottle check and we're going down lane six apparently so this is it so now they send you down these lanes and normally they're full of cars and vans what's that seat belt um, and then you just wait here until they start embarking. Right, we're officially boarding. Off we go. This is going to be fun. <laughs> How wide is sure. your van? How wide is your van? Well, we're not as wide as some of the trucks that get on here, so let's see them. So we've got to follow the arrows basically, green arrow pointing you down to the train. And if you've never seen a train before, You basically just drive into what looks like a metal container. Um, there we go. I think some sections with the lower cars are double double height, yep. like stacked on top of each other. But when you've got a top box on or a motorhome or caravan, you go into the tall section, which is a lot less claustrophobic, I would imagine. Um, not being in the double decker section, so I'm not quite sure that, what that feels like. Just drive on just. sideways, right to right up, and then you've got to manoeuvre it to get level into the train. Ooh, which is oh no mean feet when you're this long. Well done, we're in. Right, this is the tunnel. Not the tunnel. This is the train. And you just keep driving till somebody tells you to stop. As you can see, this is the double height section. Oops. And there's little joins. And these metal bits here are doors that get closed between sections of the train to stop any fire spread or anything like that. There is also emergency exits on each side, should anything happen. Obviously, they give you an announcement, a bit like on a plane. So you drive down. They they position you and then you turn off the engine, put your parking brake on and wind your windows halfway down. There are usually um, toilets on here too, but they're not in use at the moment. Possibly getting down to the section where we're going to park. Obviously, they just keep moving you until you're in position. Got squeaky brakes. Probably a bit of dust from that car park we were in. Okay. The man or woman, you can't quite see. You just see the reflection of the red coat on the wall there. Is coming to position people. 
wind my window down hard way, but I can then bring the flap a little bit. Right, well, we have uh, made it onto the train. So basically now we've just got to sit and wait. Obviously they're still boarding all the other vehicles. Um, then there'll be an announcement to tell us that we're taking off and um, we can just sit and have a cup of tea or something in there. Give Bella a drink of water and a biscuit. Right, well, we've stopped moving. Uh, he's just opening the doors now, as you can probably hear. And then we're going to drive off exactly the same way as we drove on. So I'll video that in a second. We're just about to drive off. It's hard to believe you drive on the train from one end in France and you get off it in the UK. It seems really bright after being in here. Please follow the road for 53 kilometres. Maybe there isn't a check on this side. It looks like everything's changed. There's no new signs or anything. The route includes motor roads. Remember, you have to drive on the left hand side this time. Once you get out of here, obviously, it's all one way this way. station just as you get off but there doesn't appear to be any sort of border checks on this side so nothing seems to have changed so that's great so now we're driving all the way to the Midlands which is going to take a little while I suspect. Tolls go up. Uh, no so there are no extra checks coming out there's no sort of nothing to declare section or anything like that. Uh, we're just now on the M20, heading north, so yeah, that was really simple, to be honest, nothing much seems to have changed. Hmm, I think this might have been one of the reasons we left the UK in the first place. Although, I have to say, the sun is shining, I've been telling everybody it only ever rains here, but look at that traffic, it's going to take us hours to get home. Right guys, so we, we stopped at the services, we've had a bite to eat and now we're going to head over to my mum's house and say hi after two years of not seeing her, so that should be fun. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching, we hope you've enjoyed this video and that it's been useful for anyone considering travelling on the Eurotunnel. And we're planning uh, a trip into the Lake District and up into Scotland at the beginning of September. So we'll see you later, thanks for watching.